Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I'm going to show you the process of building a codeless API service, and we will walk through the actual process of converting logic into uh, codeless, so you will know and learn how to use the technology and translate the algorithmic steps you could be thinking about for implementation in, into specific actions uh, in your codeless service. For this, what I did is I imported data into a table called Lottery. This data came from uh, this particular website. It contains uh, a lot of uh, various uh, data sets. And for this one, I picked Lottery Powerball winning numbers starting from 2010. You can download the CSV file. I'm not going to show you the process for doing that. And uh, in a blog post that accompanies this video, there will be specific instructions. So what we have here is a data table with uh, several columns. This column contains the dates when the drawing of the numbers took place. And uh, there are winning numbers, as you can see right here. And we have 573 uh, records in this table. So the service that I have in mind that I'd like to build will uh, contain a couple of methods. One will return the winning numbers for a given date. And the second operation in the service that we will be building together today will check if uh, any numbers that you would type in have ever been drawn. So we will start the process by going to business logic and we will create an API service. So I clicked on uh, the plus icon here and in the new service pop-up, click on codeless and type in the service name. So for us, it is going to be lottery service. Click save. And then the next pop-up that you will see is the one where you will have to create your first codeless method. And uh, we will call this uh, method uh, get numbers for date. And the, the argument for this is going to be the actual date when the, the drawing took place and the type for that uh, parameter is going to be string. Click save. And there you go. We already have our method. doesn't do anything at this point. Uh, in fact, if we were to invoke this method, we need to provide date. Let's say the date is going to be 03-27-2010. Click invoke. And of course, it returns nothing for the reason that uh, there is no logic in this particular implementation. To start building logic, you can either click Edit uh, right here, this button, or you can switch to the Codeless section and you will see your service right here, API Services Lottery Service. So click on Get Numbers for Date. So this is our service. Um, since the data is coming from Backendless Database, we will need to use a block that is under the Backendless category. Uh, specifically in the data API section and the block is uh, is this one load table objects okay uh, before I go further let me uh, show you how the querying uh, of a backendless database will work let me just save it for now uh, and switch to data so for instance right here this is the search bar where we can type in a query and this, in fact, uh, exactly the same query with a substituted date would need to be used in our codeless program. So right here, if you were to type in draw date equals and uh, put in the date, so for instance, it is 12, you, as you can see right here, there's 12, 27, 2014. It finds this object. So this is this is this syn syntax of the query that the codeless program will need to generate. Okay, um, switching back to business logic and then going to edit. Um, let's uh, uh, create the actual query using codeless. Notice that uh, there is a block right here, method argument date. This block will contain the value that the user will actually provide when they invoke this codeless operation. Uh, however, now uh, we will take it step by step and will focus on retrieving uh, data objects from, uh, from Backendless using the query. The query, as you remember, is the name of the column, which is draw underscore date, and then equals uh, a specific value in single quotes. So to compose a string, since we need to compose it, this is just a string uh, containing the date, but we need to compose the whole query, we will use another block that is called create text with, and it sits in the text category. Click on that block 
and uh, in here we will use this to create the actual query. Query in the canvas is called where clause, so we can just snap this into the where clause, and uh, we will have the following query. So we'll use the text block, and we will say uh, draw date equals and the first single quote then the actual argument and uh, we will also need to add the closing single quote to do this click on the gear icon and add another item so now we have three of them and I will just do copy and paste of that block with a single quote that's it. So this will compose the actual query. Notice that the load tables objects, uh, load table objects block also contains the table name. This is the table that we will be querying. The table name is lottery. And at this point, this block would already be operational. In fact, in a, taking the step-by-step -step approach, let's uh, attach that load table block, uh, load table objects block to the return. Of course, it will not do what we want. It will not return specific lottery numbers, but it will fetch the object, the entire object with all the properties based on this query. So we will deploy it now. And if we switch to the test drive, there, there is already a test invocation. Remember, early on, I clicked test to invoke it uh, right from uh, the console. And uh, we can repeat this invocation uh, by clicking the call again link. So we click call again. And uh, notice right here, this is the result that we get. So it does find that object uh, for us. Uh, right here, the result is uh, in the JSON format. If you are familiar with the format, you will know that when it starts with square brackets and uh, the entire thing is actually enclosed in the square brackets, it means it is an array. And that is uh, correct for the reason that the load table objects return a collection of objects. There is only one that, it, that matches this date because there was only one drawing on the specified date, but we will need to extract the actual object from that array. And in order to extract that object from the array, uh, if you look under the lists category, there is a block that retrieves a specific object from the collection. So this in list, and you can put the actual list. So this block will extract the first object from the collection. Uh, to keep it more compact, I'm going to do right click and uh, select external inputs. So it just changes how the object is, has, is rendered. Uh, we do not need this list variable. I'm going to delete it. And then load table objects will be attached to the uh, to this block right here. And then here we can get, get remove or remove, and we will need get, and we will need first object. So now if I attach it and click deploy, re-invoking uh, the operation in the test drive, right here, notice that the square brackets are gone and now we have the actual object. But the, re the result of this particular operation needs to return only this value, the winning numbers. So in order to extract the winning numbers from the returned objects, we will use another block that is under the object category. And here we have get property. Okay. Notice that the property name is winning numbers. You can just put it right here. And then this list, in fact, well, this object because in list returns the object. We will need to place it right here. Once again, to keep it more contact, compact, I'll switch to the external inputs and we'll attach this to here and connect to the whole thing. So just to go over the whole thing one more time, this creates the query. This returns a collection of objects that satisfy this query. This block gets the first object from this collection and this block gets the property from the first object which is exactly the value that we want. Uh, click Deploy and let's run it again. There you go. So now it returns the value that we want. And at this point, if I switch back to API services, we have a fully working method that returns numbers for a specific date. You can invoke it right here if we switch the parameters. And let's put some, uh, some date. So let's say it's going to be 12, 27, 2014 click invoke and now we have the these numbers 
Uh, this is already quite powerful for the reason that for any API service, just by the virtue of that API service being deployed to backendless, we can automatically generate and get client-side libraries for Java, that is in or Android, JavaScript, and iOS in the form of Objective-C or Swift code. And uh, the library that is generated as a result of clicking one of these options will give you an ability to start invoking that method right from the client-side environment uh, while the implementation is completely codeless. The next step in building this service will be adding another method. As I said, we will have an operation that, given the numbers, will check if they are present in uh, any of the past drawings. To create a new method, uh, you would need to be on the API services screen, uh, select the service. Uh, the selected service will always show up in this color. Uh, and right here, there is going to be a plus icon, which is uh, add method. Uh, operation. So clicking on that icon opens up the new codeless method pop-up. You have already seen it once. And let's say the name of the method will be check numbers. The rest operation here would need to be selected and it's going to be get. The reason when uh, you create a method, if it does not start with the prefix get, notice here in get numbers for date the prefix is get here we don't have this prefix although we could have come up with a method name that contains the word get so if if there is no word get and you want it to be a get operation make sure to select it as such the parameter name are going to be the numbers that the user would want to check and let's just call it numbers and the type is also going to be string click save and uh, now we have our second method check numbers the this method will work exactly the same way as the other one, except we would need to retrieve the data from the database and check if there is at least one uh, object in the return collection. If there is, that means that the numbers were present in the past drawings. If, if the collection that comes back is empty, that means the, these numbers have never been drawn. Uh, let's click uh, Invoke. Let's type in some uh, numbers. For example, 0, 2, 0, 4, 10, 41, 5, 3, 22. Of course, the implementation now is empty, so invoking it will return nothing. And the reason I do this invocation is just so it gets into the test drive. So when the logic is ready, we will have that in the test drive and it will be easier to reissue this invocation. Let's switch to logic and then go into the edit mode. Uh, the first couple of steps are going to be almost identical as with the other method. Specifically, we will use the load table objects from the lottery table and almost identical where clause. Here I'm adding, uh, I'm building up the where clause. The column name is winning numbers we will pass the argument which contains the actual numbers and then we will add another element here for the closing quote like this so here if i were to return the this value uh, let me deploy and uh, invoke it Notice that it returns an object, meaning that it has been found. And the logic that we will need to add is to check whether the collection returned by load table objects is empty or not. Luckily, it is very easy to do with codeless because in the lists category, there is a block that checks whether it is empty. Let's also change it to external inputs and attach it to this. So check this out. Is empty, it's going to check whether this collection is empty and will return true or false. So if it is empty, it is going to be true. If it is not empty, it's going to be false. And since this, since the operation that we're building would need to work in the reverse uh, manner, meaning that if it is empty, that, that should return false because the numbers were not found. To negate the result, if we go under logic, there is a NOT operation. So attaching NOT to this and then to the return will give us exactly the result that we're looking for. Let me go over the codeless logic one more time. Right here, 
we are composing a query and we're sending that query to the lottery table. It retrieves all the objects that satisfy this query and there may be either one if the numbers are found or zero if the numbers are not found. This block returns a collection of objects and this block checks whether this collection is empty or not. And this block prepares the result so it is semantically matches the intent of this method, which is supposed to check if the numbers are present. Let me deploy it and then invoke it again. So notice that the result now is true, meaning that the numbers that we're submitting into this operation are found. In fact, if we go back to API services and go to the parameters and re-input the same numbers we had, 0, 2, 0, 4, 10, 41, 53, 22, and click invoke, we get 2. Let's change it to just some other number. It returns false. So as you can see, the effort that it took us to create this operation without these two operations, without any code, was not that significant. And now we have a fully functional API service that can be invoked from anywhere, including the REST API and the native APIs, which are generated by Backhandless. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, it will uh, give you a, a better idea of how to build codeless operations. And uh, make sure to check out other videos in this series as we explore the codeless universe. Thank you, and as always, happy codeless coding.